The ancient chronicle Mahabamsa mentions the thriving pearl industry in the port of Orwila in the Gulf of Manar in Sri Lanka. It also records that eight varieties of pearls accompanied Prince Vijaya's embassy to the Pandian king as well as King Devanampiatissa's embassy to Emperor Ashoka. Pliny the Elder, 23-79 AD, praised the pearl fishery of the Gulf as most productive in the world. For thousands of years, seawater pearls were retrieved by divers in the Indian Ocean in areas such as the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea and the Gulf of Manar. Evidence also suggests a prehistoric origin to pearl diving in these regions. Starting in the Han Dynasty, 206 BC-220 AD, the Chinese hunted extensively for seawater pearls in the South China Sea. Tonka pearl divers of 12th century China attached ropes to their waists in order to be safely brought back up to the surface. When Spanish conquistadors arrived in the Western Hemisphere, they discovered that around the islands of Cubagua and Margarita, some 200 kilometers north of the Venezuelan coast, was an extensive pearl bed, a bed of pearl oysters. One discovered and named pearl, La Peregrina Pearl, was offered to Philip II of Spain who intended to give it as a gift for his daughter on the occasion of her marriage, but the king found it so beautiful that he kept it for himself. Later, he elevated it to be part of the Spanish crown jewel. And from then on the pearl is recorded in every royal inventory for more than 200 years. According to Garcilaso de la Vega, who says that he saw La Peregrina at Seville in 1607, this was found at Panama in 1560 by a slave worker who was rewarded with his liberty, and his owner with the office of Alcalde of Panama. Margarita pearls are extremely difficult to find today and are known for their unique yellowish color. Before the beginning of the 20th century, pearl hunting was the most common way of harvesting pearls. Divers manually pulled oysters from ocean floors and river bottoms and checked them individually for pearls. Not all mussels and oysters produce pearls. In a hull of three tons, only three or four oysters will produce perfect pearls. Pearls were one of the attractions which drew Julius Caesar to Britain. They are, for the most part, freshwater pearls from mussels. Pearling was banned in the UK in 1998 due to the endangered status of river mussels. Discovery and publicity about the sale for a substantial sum of the Abernethy pearl in the River Tay had resulted in heavy exploitation of mussel colonies during the 1970s and 80s by weekend warriors. When it was permitted it was carried on mainly by Scottish travellers who found pearls buried from river to river with the river oikel in the highlands being noted for the finest rose pink pearls. There are two firms in Scotland that are licensed to sell pre-1998 freshwater pearls. Today, the cultured pearls on the market can be divided into two categories. The first category covers the beaded cultured pearls, including Akoya, South Sea and Tahiti. These pearls are gonad grown, and usually one pearl is grown at a time. This limits the number of pearls at a harvest period. The pearls are usually harvested after one year for Akoya, two to four years for Tahitian and South Sea, and two to seven years for freshwater. This perliculture process was first developed by the British biologist William Seville Kent who passed the information along to Tatsuhe Mize and Tokachi Nishikawa from Japan. The second category includes the non-beaded freshwater cultured pearls, like the Biwa or Chinese pearls. As they grow in the mantle, where on each wing up to 25 grafts can be implanted, these pearls are much more frequent and saturate the market completely. An impressive improvement in quality has taken place over 10 years when the former. Rice grain shaped pebbles are compared with the near round pearls of today. Later, large near perfect round bead nucleated pearls up to 15 mm in diameter have been produced with metallic luster. The nucleus bead in a beaded cultured pearl is generally a polished sphere made from freshwater mussel shell. Along with a small piece of mantle tissue from another mollusk, donor shell, to serve as a catalyst for the pearl sac, it is surgically implanted into the gonad, reproductive organ, of a saltwater mollusk. In freshwater perliculture, only the piece of tissue is used in most cases, and is inserted into the fleshy mantle of the host mussel. South Sea and Tahitian pearl oysters, also known as Pinctata maxima and Pinctata margaritifera, which survive the subsequent surgery to remove the finished pearl, are often implanted with a new, larger beads as part of the same procedure and then returned to the water for another two to three years of growth. Despite the common misperception, Mikimoto did not discover the process of pearl culture. The accepted process of pearl culture was developed by the British biologist William Seville Kent in Australia and brought to Japan by Tokuchi Nishikawa and Tatsuhe Mize. 
Nishikawa was granted the patent in 1916, and married the daughter of Mikimoto. Mikimoto was able to use Nishikawa's technology. After the patent was granted in 1916, the technology was immediately commercially applied to Akoya Pearl Oysters in Japan in 1916. Mize's brother was the first to produce a commercial crop of pearls in the Akoya Oyster. Mitsubishi's Baron Iwasaki immediately applied the technology to the South Sea Pearl Oyster in 1917 in the Philippines, and later in Budan, and Palau. Mitsubishi was the first to produce a cultured South Sea Pearl, although it was not until 1928 that the first small commercial crop of pearls was successfully produced. The original Japanese cultured pearls, known as Akoya pearls, are produced by a species of small pearl oyster, Pinctata fucata martensi, which is no bigger than 6 to 8 centimeters, 2.4 to 3.1 in, in size, hence Akoya pearls larger than 10 millimeters in diameter are extremely rare and highly priced. Today, a hybrid mollusk is used in both Japan and China in the production of Akoya pearls. Cultured pearls were sold in cans for the export market. These were packed in Japan by the ICP Canning Factory, International Pearl Company Ltd., in Nagasaki Pref. Japan. Mitsubishi commenced pearl culture with the South Sea Pearl Oyster in 1916, as soon as the technology patent was commercialized. By 1931 this project was showing signs of success, but was upset by the death of Tatsuhei Mize. Although the project was recommenced after Tatsuhei's death, the project was discontinued at the beginning of World War II before significant productions of pearls were achieved. After World War II, new South Sea Pearl projects were commenced in the early 1950s at Curry Bay and Port Essington in Australia, and Burma. Japanese companies were involved in all projects using technicians from the original Mitsubishi South Sea pre-war projects. Curry Bay is now the location of one of the largest and most well-known pearl farms owned by Paspali, the biggest producer of South Sea pearls in the world. In 2010, China overtook Japan in Akoya pearl production. Japan has all but ceased its production of Akoya pearls smaller than 8 mm. Japan maintains its status as a pearl processing center however, and imports the majority of Chinese Akoya pearl production. These pearls are then processed, often simply matched and sorted, relabeled as product of Japan, and exported. In the past two decades, cultured pearls have been produced using larger oysters in the South Pacific and Indian Ocean. The largest pearl oyster is the Pinctata Maxima, which is roughly the size of a dinner plate. South Sea pearls are characterized by their large size and warm luster. Sizes up to 14 mm in diameter are not uncommon. In 2013, Indonesia Pearl supplied 43% of South Sea Pearl's international market. The other significant producers are Australia, Philippines, Myanmar and Malaysia. In 1914, pearl farmers began growing cultured freshwater pearls using the pearl mussels native to Lake Biwa. This lake, the largest and most ancient in Japan, lies near the city of Kyoto. The extensive and successful use of the Biwa pearl mussel is reflected in the name Biwa pearls, a phrase which was at one time nearly synonymous with freshwater pearls in general. Since the time of peak production in 1971, when Biwa pearl farmers produced six tons of cultured pearls, pollution has caused the virtual extinction of the industry. Japanese pearl farmers recently cultured a hybrid pearl mussel, a cross between Biwa pearl mussels and a closely related species from China. Hyriopsis kumini, in Lake Kasumagora. This industry has also nearly ceased production, due to pollution. Currently, the Belpearl Company based out of Kobe, Japan continues to purchase the remaining Kasumiga Ura pearls. Japanese pearl producers also invested in producing cultured pearls with freshwater mussels in the region of Shanghai, China. China has since become the world's largest producer of freshwater pearls, producing more than 1,500 metric tons per year. In addition to metric measurements, Japanese units of measurement such as the Khan and Mom are sometimes encountered in the pearl industry. Led by pearl pioneer John LaTondresse and his wife Chessie, the United States began farming cultured freshwater pearls in the mid-1960s. National Geographic magazine introduced the American cultured pearl as a commercial product in their August 1985 issue. The Tennessee Pearl Farm has emerged as a tourist destination in recent years, but commercial production of freshwater pearls has ceased. For many cultured pearl dealers and wholesalers, the preferred weight measure used for loose pearls and pearl strands is the mom. Mom is a weight measure used by the Japanese for centuries. Today, 
Mong weight is still the standard unit of measure used by most pearl dealers to communicate with pearl producers and wholesalers. One mong corresponds to one one-thousandth con. Reluctant to give up tradition, the Japanese government formalized the con measure in 1891 as being exactly 3.75 kilograms or 8.28 pounds. Hence, one mong equals 3.75 grams or 3,750 milligrams. In the United States, during the 19th and 20th centuries, through trade with Japan in silk cloth the mom became a unit indicating the quality of silk cloth. Though millimeter size range is typically the first factor in determining a cultured pearl necklace's value, the mom weight of pearl necklace will allow the buyer to quickly determine if the necklace is properly proportioned. This is especially true when comparing the larger South Sea and Tahitian pearl necklaces. The value of the pearls in jewelry is determined by a combination of the luster, color, size, lack of surface flaw and symmetry that are appropriate for the type of pearl under consideration. Among those attributes, luster is the most important differentiator of pearl quality according to jewelers. All factors being equal, however, the larger the pearl the more valuable it is. Large, perfectly round pearls are rare and highly valued. Teardrop-shaped pearls are often used in pendants. Pearls are generally of spherical shapes. Perfectly round pearls are the rarest and most valuable shape. Semi-rounds are also used in necklaces or in pieces where the shape of the pearl can be disguised to look like it is a perfectly round pearl. Button pearls are like a slightly flattened round pearl and can also make a necklace, but are more often used in single pendants or earrings where the back half of the pearl is covered, making it look like a larger, rounder pearl. Pear-shaped pearls sometimes look like teardrop pearls and are most often seen in earrings, pendants, or as a center pearl in a necklace. Baroque pearls have a different appeal. They are often highly irregular with unique and interesting shapes. They are also commonly seen in necklaces. Circled pearls are characterized by concentric ridges, or rings, around the body of the pearl. In general, cultured pearls are less valuable than natural pearls, whereas imitation pearls have almost no value. One way that jewelers can determine whether a pearl is cultured or natural is to have a gem lab perform an X-ray examination of the pearl. If X-rays reveals a nucleus, the pearl is likely a bead-nucleated saltwater pearl. If no nucleus is present, but irregular and small dark inner spots indicating a cavity are visible, combined with concentric rings of organic substance, the pearl is likely a cultured freshwater. Cultured freshwater pearls can often be confused for natural pearls which present as homogeneous pictures which continuously darken toward the surface of the pearl. Natural pearls will often show larger cavities where organic matter has dried out and decomposed. There is a special vocabulary used to describe the length of pearl necklaces. While most other necklaces are simply referred to by their physical measurement, pearl necklaces are named by how low they hang when worn around the neck. A collar measuring 10 to 13 inches or 25 to 33 centimeters in length, sits directly against the throat and does not hang down the neck at all. Collars are often made up of multiple strands of pearls. Pearl chokers, measuring 14 to 16 inches or 35 to 41 centimeters in length, nestle just at the base of the neck. A strand called a princess length, measuring 17 to 19 inches or 43 to 48 centimeters in length, comes down to or just below the collarbone. A matinee length, measuring 20 to 24 inches or 50 to 60 centimeters in length, falls just above the breasts. An opera length, measuring 28 to 35 inches or 70 to 90 centimeters in length, will be long enough to reach the breastbone or sternum of the wearer, and longer still, a pearl rope, measuring more than 45 inches or 115 centimeters in length, is any length that falls down farther than an opera. Necklaces can also be classified as uniform, or graduated. In a uniform strand of pearls, all pearls are classified as the same size, but actually fall in a range. A uniform strand of Akoya pearls, for example, will measure within 0.5 mm. So a strand will never be 7 mm, but will be 6.5-7 m. Freshwater pearls, Tahitian pearls, and South Sea pearls all measure to a full millimeter when considered uniform. A graduated strand of pearls most often has at least 3 mm of differentiation from the ends to the center of the necklace. Popularized in the United States during the 1950s by the GIs bringing strands of cultured Akoya pearls home from Japan, a 3.5 mom, 
3 mm to 7 mm graduated strand was much more affordable than a uniform strand because most of the pearls were small. Earrings and necklaces can also be classified on the grade of the color of the pearl. Saltwater and freshwater pearls come in many different colors. While white, and more recently black, saltwater pearls are by far the most popular, other color tints can be found on pearls from the oceans. Pink, blue, champagne, green, and even purple saltwater pearls can be encountered, but to collect enough of these rare colors to form a complete string of the same size and same shade can take years. The vast majority of inexpensive colored pearls have been subjected to some form of dye, often a fabric dye. This dye will only tend to penetrate the first layer or two of nacre, but this is enough to impart vivid and sometimes garish color to otherwise white pearls. Truly valuable pearls are never dyed, and this process is not believed to add and in most cases would only subtract from their market value. The Hindu tradition describes the sacred nine pearls which were first documented in the Garuda Purana, one of the books of the Hindu scriptures. Ayurveda contains references to pearl powder as a stimulant of digestion and to treat mental ailments. According to Marco Polo, the kings of Malabar wore a necklace of 108 rubies and pearls which was given from one generation of kings to the next. The reason was that every king had to say 108 prayers every morning and every evening. At least until the beginning of the 20th century it was a Hindu custom to present a completely new, undrilled pearl and pierce it during the wedding ceremony. The pearl, which can be transliterated to Modi, a type of Mani, from Sanskrit, is also associated with many Hindu deities, the most famous being the Kaustuba that Lord Vishnu wears on his chest. A pearl is a hard, glistening object produced within the soft tissue, specifically the mantle, of a living shelled mollusk or another animal, such as fossil conulariates. Just like the shell of a mollusk, a pearl is composed of calcium carbonate, mainly aragonite or a mixture of aragonite and calcite, in minute crystalline form, which has deposited in concentric layers. The ideal pearl is perfectly round and smooth, but many other shapes, known as baroque pearls, can occur. The finest quality of natural pearls have been highly valued as gemstones and objects of beauty for many centuries. Because of this, pearl has become a metaphor for something rare, fine, admirable and valuable.